Good evening, friends. Welcome to our Christmas Eve service. Can you believe Christmas Eve is here? What a fun and exciting night, and I am grateful that you have chosen to spend a small part of it with us tonight as we uh, worship and welcome Jesus Christ into our midst. And hey, let's, let's be honest. This uh, Home for Christmas was our, our December theme here, and this isn't exactly the way that we thought Home for Christmas would unfold, but maybe tonight we all can, can find a little bit of a gift in the opportunity to actually be home for Christmas. So um, let's pause and remember that tonight, all over the world, in, in homes, in, in every country, there are people who have spent the last month waiting and expecting and anticipating who tonight pause to, to welcome and to receive and to remember that through Jesus Christ, born this night, God is with us. And so people all over the world tonight will be lighting candles to remember and to mark the presence of God in our midst through Jesus Christ, who is the light of the world, born this night. If you haven't done so already, uh, let me invite you to go ahead and grab a, a candle uh, from your home that we'll use as the Christ candle and that you'll light there in just a moment um, as a part of our Christmas Eve remembrance. Uh, and then maybe grab uh, some small candles as well. Grab one for every person that's uh, in your home watching with you, and we'll light those at the end of the service during our traditional silent night candlelight ending. Um, and again, we'll do that at the end of the service. But tonight, as we begin in worship together, let's light the candle of Christ, remembering the one that is the light of the world in our midst with us. The prophet said, the prophet Isaiah proclaimed a time when those who walk in darkness would see a great light. A light would shine and a child would be born to us. The gospel writer Luke painted the nativity sky and repeated the heavenly song of the angels, glory, peace on earth, goodwill. The apostle John declared that this great light is Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh, and this great light lives among us. By it, we behold God's glory, full of grace and truth. We gather tonight to welcome Jesus Christ into our midst, into our hearts, into our homes. Jesus Christ, the light of the world. marking God's presence with us through Jesus Christ. We light the Christ candle in all of our homes together. Pray with me. God, our life and our light, thank you for coming to us this night. Thank you for entering our world. Thank you Thank you for touching all of heaven and earth with your splendor and your love and your glory and your truth. In every corner of the world, shine this night with your peace. And in every corner of our hearts, shine this night with your grace. Come, Lord Jesus, we worship you. Amen. No crib for a bed. The little Lord Jesus lay down his sweet head. The stars in the sky look down where he lay. The little Lord Jesus asleep on the hay.
hear these words from the Gospel of Luke in chapter 2. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. And this will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. Mangers are curious little things. Maybe you've, maybe you've seen a manger like this in a nativity scene somewhere. Typically in Jesus' day, they would have been carved out of a, a block of stone, but sometimes maybe they, they looked like this, and they'd, they'd fill it with hay or grain or corn, and the animals would amble over and eat. Probably not the most comfortable place to take a nap, but you know what, in a, in a pinch, they're actually kind of protective. Maybe that's why a group of people in Jesus' day used to take little baby lambs and lay them in, in the mangers. There's a place um, outside of Jerusalem a ways, actually it was a hill right on the edge of Bethlehem. And on this hillside and, and in the pastures around it, they raised a special group of lambs, a, a flock of lambs, and these lambs were used for the sacrifices that happened in the temple, the sacrifices that covered the people's sins. The lambs that, that had to be used for these sacrifices, well, they had to be special, and so the priests would look for lambs without blemish. They'd look for a lamb that, that had no, no injuries. They were, they were perfect. They had no spots or stains or, or weaknesses. Lambs without blemish. These were the ones. These were the ones that would get used in the sacrifices in the temple. And actually, it was these, these special sacrificial lambs that Bethlehem was known for. The flocks raised on the hills outside Bethlehem, these were the ones, these were the flocks that produced the sacrificial lambs. Now the priests who would bring these lambs to the temple, they had to keep these little lambs safe and they had to protect them so that they didn't get any bumps or, or bruises. And so they would take these newborn lambs when they would find them, when they would see one that, that looked like it was without blemish. And and they would, they would wrap them up. They would take white cloths and, and, and they would swaddle them, much like you might do a, a small infant. They would wrap these lambs up and then they would lay them in the manger to keep them safe before they needed to be used in the temple. They would keep them safe for the sacrifice. You know, there's only... Uh, four books in the Bible, the four Gospels, that talk about the story of the life of Jesus. And of those four, only one, only Luke, uses the word manger. He's the only one that tells this part of the story. And maybe that's because only a, a small group of people would really understand the significance of, of a manger in this story. Only, only a few would grasp the implications of the newborn Savior being lain in a manger. There, there were only a few who would, who would hear the angel say, you will find this baby wrapped in cloth and, and, and lying in a manger. Only a 
small group would, would get what that means. You know who, who would have gotten it? The shepherds. The shepherds who, who, who raised the sacrificial flocks of Bethlehem. They would have heard those words and, and known exactly what this meant. They would have, they would have heard about uh, the, the, the baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and they would have known what that meant. They would have seen this newborn baby lying in a manger, swaddled in cloth, and they, they would have known. The angel told them, this will be a sign to you that he'll, you'll find him wrapped in cloth and lying in a manger. And, and it was a sign. Oh, it was a sign that most would miss, but those shepherds couldn't forget. It was a sign of where this newborn Jesus was headed. The angels told them where he would be born. The manger told them where he was going. This one, this one wrapped in cloth and lying in a manger, this one would be sacrificed. This one, this one would save his people from their sins. This one, the, the angels promised, would bring good news, which would cause great joy for all people. But it was going to be painful and costly to bring that joy. I often wonder what the, what the shepherds thought as they looked upon that scene for the first time. I wonder if, if their great joy was tempered by the knowledge of where this one was headed. You know, babies have, have this almost magical power to bring a smile to the, to the grinchiest face. But I wonder if the shepherd's smiles had a little bit of a pause in them knowing that this one would be sacrificed. I wonder if, if, these, if these shepherds, because they knew what lie ahead, I wonder, I wonder if their hearts hesitated a little bit. And you know what I, I really think is that these shepherds, more so than the leading theologians of their day, I bet that these shepherds realized that the great joy for all people, that, that joy the angels promised, that the only way that that joy could arrive was on the other side of this great sacrifice that this newborn king, this newborn Messiah must make. Well, tonight on this, on this Christmas Eve, I hope you'll find the space to kind of hold all of those ideas and all of those feelings in your heart together at the same time, may you smile at the thought of the one born this night, the one we've been waiting for through Advent. May you, may you hold some peace on this silent night, knowing that God has drawn near and God is with us. And may you even hold a bit of awe and wonder in your heart, remembering that the one born this night would lay down his life in love for you and me, to show us God's love and to save us from our sins. And tonight, on this oh-so-holy night, may you find in the depths of your heart that great joy that the angels promised because through this one born this night, we belong to God forever. And as you hold all of those things in your heart tonight, may you sleep in heavenly peace. Merry Christmas. Oh, holy night, the stars are brightly shining. It is the night of our dear Savior's birth. Long lay the world in sin and error pining till he appeared and the soul felt its worth. A 
Good evening, Copper Creek, and a Merry Christmas Eve to each one of you. Let's join our minds and our hearts together in prayer. I invite you to pray with me. Father God, tonight we gather on this holy Christmas Eve in a way that we couldn't have imagined a year ago. There is so much to be said about this year. We have lost much, but you, O oh God, have remained faithful. So we gather around screens with family and friends on this holy night to remember and to give thanks. For tonight, a new heaven and a new earth are born. Tonight, God puts on flesh and comes down to live as we live, to know our joys and our sorrows, to draw near. Tonight, we pray for peace among all people, for all those who are sick, lonely, sorrowful, or in any kind of trouble. Transform our hearts to care for all our neighbors and to love them as we love ourselves. Tonight we are excited and joyful, and we are lonely and sad. Our lives are not as we thought they would be. Our world is filled with danger and sickness. We are far from those we love and long to hold in our arms. Creator and maker of all, our hearts are heavy with loss. We pray for all who have died and for those who mourn. We ask your healing care on all those who are ill and your strength for those who care for them. Remember, Lord, those who are far from us this year and who we long to hold. Knit our hearts together in your heart while we must be separate. We thank you for modern medicine, for our first responders, for those who have served selflessly for the betterment of all humanity. 
We thank you for the hope of a vaccine. We ask for your healing power to be at work in our world. We thank you for our new church home, for the generosity of our Copper Creek community. We thank you for your provision and for your care. And for those in need, we ask that you would arrange for new opportunities in this coming year. Holy and loving God, we give you thanks for this night, but especially for the birth of your son, Jesus, the incarnate God, born to bring hope for all. Thank you for this yearly reminder that you loved us so much that you set down your power and came to live among us as one of us. Bind up our hurts and help us remember that you are always with us. Next year, may we be together in person, but if not, may our hearts be united in you as they are on this holy night. Be present with us wherever we may be watching. May the joy and hope of that first Christmas be real to us this night. Come, Lord Jesus. Amen. Friends, as we close with Silent Night, I'd invite you to uh, take your, your personal candles. We'll be lighting these from the Christ candle, which is hopefully already burning in all of our, our homes. And we light this candle partly to remind ourselves that Jesus doesn't just enter the world, and this isn't just good news for all people. It's good news for every single person. And so as you light your candle tonight from the Christ candle, may it be a prayer for you, a prayer of inviting Jesus to be born anew in your heart. May it be a prayer inviting the life of Jesus to come alive in you. May it be uh, an invitation and a welcome receiving Jesus into your heart again tonight so that our lives may reflect his heart in the way that we enter his world. And so, friends, Jesus Christ, born this night, the light of the world, God with us. Silent night, holy night, all is calm, all is bright, round yon virgin mother and child.
Friends, this is one of my favorite parts, maybe my favorite part of this Christmas Eve service, which is my favorite service of the year. Usually, I would ask you all, as you are standing with your candle lit, I'd ask you to, to lift it on high. And that is my, my moment of pastoral privilege, that moment I, I, I love as much as any moment in the life of the church. When we all stand holding our, our candles lit each of us each a part of the body of Christ each holding our candles together as one it's a beautiful and powerful moment but the truth is you don't need that candle because the light of Christ shines in you in fact Jesus himself said you are the light of the world because he dwells in you. You are like a city on the hill. You are the light on a lampstand. The light of Christ burns in you. And so we close our service tonight blowing out these candles, remembering that we leave this time together carrying the light of Christ into the world, not burning on a wick wrapped in wax, but burning in our hearts filled with Christ. So friends, we close our service by blowing out these candles and saying to one another, Merry Christmas. God is with us. Go in peace. Good night.